Good evening, and welcome to another Mothman podcast. Tonight, we're going back into the vault, and we're going out to research some of the old radio stations that our grandparents used to set back and listen to. Tonight, we're going back into the Lights Out series. It's a radio show that took place in 1943. And I hope you like this podcast. Tonight's episode is going to be Until Dead. Supernatural and the supernormal, dramatizing the fantasies and the terrors of the unknown. We tell you this frankly, so if you wish to avoid the excitement and tension of these imaginative plays, we urge you calmly but sincerely to turn off your radio now. This is our Joe Boy. He walks the earth, the little man. You look at him and say, what can he do? But then comes war and barbarism threatens his own home and suddenly the little man towers over the earth, a figure of vengeance. This too tonight is a story of vengeance. But before we begin, Bob Stevenson wants to ask you a question. Does day's end find you so worn out and all in that you can't enjoy the evening? Are you so jittery and underweight and under par that you're losing out in your work and in your fun? Remember the name. Ironized yeast tablets. And now... Lights out, everybody. You've got ten minutes with them, Counselor. I know, I know. Colonel Rogan, I understand you want to see me. Sit down, Counselor. I'm very busy. You understand? Sit down. Yes. What's on your mind? There's always a chance, you know. The jury's been out three hours. Never with the jury. Get me a knife. Huh? Get me a knife. A knife? Are you insane? A knife. Get me one. But, but why? You've got a chance. My, my final summation. The jury might... My, my deadlock. Yes, deadlock. Shut up and listen to me. Well? When the jury comes in, he'll be there, sure. He? Mark Street. Oh. Oh, him. You still don't believe. Oh, but I, I do. I do. I definitely believe that an individual by that name does exist. Exist? He killed my wife. But, but the evidence... He killed my wife, you hear me? He killed my wife. Yes, yes, I know. No, you listen to me. You listen, I'll make you listen. For days you've been out there in that courtroom talking words. Words, high-sounding legal words. All the time you won't believe the word I told you. All the time back of that mug of yours you've been thinking, yeah, he killed her, he killed her. I killed her. That's the funniest thing that ever came into a man's life. Now, Mac, I want you to Let know... Let me get it out of me. Marie was my wife. She, she was helping me and loving me. A guy come along who couldn't stand to being happy. Took a look at Marie and in that rat mind he must have said to himself, Okay, beautiful, I'm going to get you. How and when, I don't know, but someday, beautiful, someday. That's what he said. And that's what he did. What? When that he came over. Sure, he got to be my friend. He came over and when Marie told him I was... Working late down at the plant, he said he'd wait for me. Business. Business of hell. What? Oh, how can I tell you? I, I can only think it in my head and remember it in my head. I hear her. I hear her. Don't you? Fighting again. Fighting. I don't hear anything. Fighting. Fighting. She must have clawed at his eyes. And that knife in his hand. He stabbed her once. And again, in the third time. When I got home, she had strength to whisper just two words. His name. And then she was dead. And she killed her. He'd find me so I'd take the rat knee that loved her. Mark Street, he did it. You hear me, Mark Street? But, but no trace of the man. He'll come back, I tell you. He'll come back now to hear that Joey speak his peace. He'll come back, I know he will. That'll be my chance to get him. Get me that knife. But, Mac, my knife, I got that. He'll be there. 
I can give it to him once, twice, three times the way he did to her in his face and his neck and his dirty heart dead the way she's dead, his blood wiping out what he did to her. A knife. Get me a knife. You got it, all right. Everything's going to be all right. But I sure is. You certainly didn't think I'd really... Well, I, I mean a man in my position. You didn't bring it. Be sensible, Mac. How could I? Your wild story about revenge against the man nobody you knows. Double cross, Mac. Sure is coming. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. You will read the verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant is charged in the indictment. Guilty of murder in the first degree. Yeah, There's no one rise and face the court. He's talking to you, Mac. What? There's no one rise. Judge, get up, Rogue. Mark Street. You're here. I know it. Mac, Rogan, have you anything to say before a sentence is passed upon you? I see him. Rogan, what's the matter? Mark Street, he's here. Here. Mark Street, you're here, I see you. I'll get you now. Get him, somebody. Oh, now he's here. Mark Street, I've got to get him and kill him. He's crazy. He's killing him. Let me go. No, no, let go of me. Get him, get away. You're here, I saw him. Mark Street, listen to me. I'll get you. I tell you, I'll get you and you got hurt. Great time. What's the cross your face and what's broken up? What's your heart? I'll get you, Mark Street, I swear. I'll get you. Asking you as a particular favor to me, Rogan, to behave yourself. Yeah. Well, every man in this cell block is a condemned man. Disturbances just make it harder for everyone concerned. I ain't going to be with you long, Warden. Yes. Two weeks yet, my boy. I'm not going out that way. Oh. Escape, eh? I'm just telling you not to count too much on swinging that trap. Don't try it, Rogan. No man's ever escaped from the death house in this penitentiary. And no man ever will. Yeah. Well, this is it, Rogan. And I wouldn't. Oh, hello, Rico. Oh, guard, open the cell door. Hello, Rogan. In here, Rogan. Uh, what's the matter, Warden? Your hotel getting crowded, so you got to give me a roommate? Now, behave yourself, men. I don't want any trouble. Well, I sure wouldn't. You don't make any trouble. I hope not. See you later. The <laughs> warden's like a school teacher. Uh, Rogan? How do you know my name? Yeah, there ain't much going on around here. Rico Bartelli don't know. Yeah? Yeah. You don't want to know. How do you get out of here? Well, um, uh, there's two ways. Um, one through that door where you just came in with the warden... And the other through that green door down there at the other end. That's a funny door. It only opens up one way. They're not going to hang me. Ah, a lot of guys say that, but they feed the worms just the same. I'm getting out of here. Well, it's easy just to talk. i got to get out. Why? To kill who crazy? Well, never mind. To me, it'll make no difference just so long as you help me. I told you a week about telling those lots of things. Well, listen to this. I know where to crack this place. They just talk. I'll die in my spot. Don't just talk, my friend. Me, I ain't got time to talk. Yeah. They think they're going to hang me three days from now. Oh. Yeah, that's why when I say something, I mean it. You too. The guts. I'm listening. Look. Every day, four o'clock. They'll let me and you out in the room down there that they call an exercise room. We're supposed to walk up and down and get exercise so we'll feel good when they stretch our neck. All you and me in the exercise room for ten minutes. No guard. They figure it's all right. The room ain't got nothing in there, no window. And the guard locks it up from the outside. Then how do you... I'm not trying to tell you. In the room is nothing. Bare wall. Death wall. And in the floor, there's one iron sword there bleeding down to the sword that runs under the stick the river. Marie, sure, sure. You do like I say, Marie, will see you pretty quick. This water, how deep is my island? No, no. Doesn't make any difference. I can swim in it. Yeah, not in this water, my friend. Why not? How far is it from where we can get in the sewer to the river? My island. I can swim a dozen. Yeah, not in this water. Why not? 
Tell me why not. Hey, you guys, I got. Okay, screw. We're going to sleep. Tell me, why not? Because my plan, after the pipe that's under the exercise room goes a little way, it joins the main pipe. Well, and on the main so there's no room for swimming. The pipe's filled to the top with water. I'll swim it anyway. And breathe what? The water? I've got to get out. Sure, you've said that before. But you ain't going to get out if you don't listen to Rico. I tell you, the water in the sewer's up at the top. Maybe half or one inch clear air up on top. Not enough to swim, my friend. But just enough to get air. If you got the right thing. What? A diving rig? Ah, a little piece of rubber pipe that you keep in your mouth. And you stick it up out of the water so you suck in the air while you walk through the water. That's over your head. Where do you get the rubber hose? Yeah. See? I got one right here. And I got another one for you. This thing stuck in my mouth. This thing I raise it high like this. So it sticks up out of the water and I suck up that little inch of air that's waiting up there on top. Rock Street, I'll be coming for you soon. Rock Street, what's that? All I want to know is you're going to break with me down the sewer tomorrow. Man, you don't know what you're doing for me. Ah, shut your mouth. I do it because I can't lift the heavy sewer lid by myself. But with you, we'll lift it. We'll lift it. Okay. Tomorrow, four o'clock, we try, huh? Four o'clock. Ladies and gentlemen, a deep breath. Please, before we go on with the story of Vengeance and Mac Rogan. Yes, and while we do so, girls, is this how you feel these strenuous war days? No, I'm not going to dance with a soldier. I'm too tired out to enjoy it. And since I've gotten so thin and run down and on edge, nobody wants to dance with me anyway. Well, you don't look so good lately. But listen, you know Sally Blake? Well, she was underweight and weary and jumpy, too. And she found out that all she needed was more vitamin B and iron. Vitamin B and iron? I don't understand. Let me explain, miss. When you don't get enough vitamin B from your food, you may lose your appetite so you don't eat enough. And then you may lose weight and lose your pep. Or you may not get all the good out of your food. And when you don't get enough iron from what you eat, you may be weak and pale and washed out. Oh, dear. If more vitamin B and iron is what I need, I suppose I've got to take some disagreeable medicine. Sally didn't. She took ironized yeast tablets. She says they're a cinch to take. Just pleasant little tablets. And you should see that. And now, back to Lights Out. This is the day and the time for the two condemned men to make their try for freedom. Get plenty of exercise, boys. Won't be long now. Sure, it's well exercised. Rico. Rico. The floor, there's no sewer lid in it. You think they got a label on it or something? Quit talking. We've got to move fast. Show me for the love of heaven. Okay, okay. Keep your pants on. Yeah. You see the circle on the floor? Yeah. That's a lid. It's covered with cement just like the floor. Must be heaven all that weight how we lift it out. Keep quiet. Yeah. I got something that'll do the work. Cold chisel. I Wait, told you, Rico Bartelli's a smart guy. This little piece of steel cost me plenty. But I got her and she was going to get me right out of here. Now, listen. Yeah. Look. Stick the chisel in the crack. I push up. The cover it comes up a little bit. And you stick your fingers under me. Okay. I got it. There. Now, get your fingers under. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Okay. You drop down there first. 
I don't know how deep the water is. There goes. Open the meal and 
night at the disturbing the peace. Well, what's the matter? Tell me. Tell you what? What's the matter? You drunk? What do you want? Mark Street. Mark Street? Is that what you said? They told me. He's staying here. He was staying here, you mean? He's gone? That's all right. He's gone. Tell me. Where? Where is he now? He's down six feet in the Rosamond Cemetery. Mark Street. He's died last week. Good night. Mark Street. Died last week. <laughs> no, Mark Street, you can't cheat me that way. Rosemont Cemetery, said. All right, Mark Street. I'm coming out to you.
No. Go back to your grave. Mark Street. And I'll... go to mine. Mr. Obler, do you really think that revenge can go beyond the grave? I like to think that it doesn't. I like to think that murder and mercy find equal rest in peaceful death. Well, I'm interested in next week's story. You go back to California to do that one. What's it going to be about? It's a long postponed tale. I started to do it three times in this program, and each time something happened. I'll tell you of those postponements in a moment, after you finish what you want to tell us. Well, revenge. Hmm. It's a hateful thought. Till next week. Thank you for listening to Mothman Podcast. I'll see you on the radio. Or the podcast. Whichever comes first. Have a great evening. The Mothman. Good night. <laughs>